Hey, what's up guys? Mike at Red Fox here. Today I'm gonna to give you my update on mining Ethereum with a 3060 Ti. Okay, so it's been a few weeks now I've been mining with this card. Hopefully you guys caught my uh, original video where I gave first impressions on mining with the 3060 Ti, mining Ethereum, and we landed on some early overclocks and we landed on some early performance and some early power usage. Um, please check out that video, but today I wanna do a follow-up because it's been a few weeks and I wanna show where I've landed with my overclocks, what type of performance I'm getting, what miners I'm using, answer the question, is this GPU getting thermal throttled? And then share some community conversation that's been going on around overclocks, around performance, where other people are seeing. So let's get started. So over here I have MSI Afterburner, and you can see my overclocks right there. And we're gonna walk through each one, and I'll share where I landed and why, and then also some uh, discussion from the community. So first of all, thank you to absolutely everybody who commented on my original video, everybody who's commented in disc uh, the popular mining discords, all that information, you sharing your experiences has been super helpful, not only to building this community, but really helpful for me to figure out where my overclocks are and am I heading in the right direction. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to absolutely everybody. This is really one of the fun times in mining is when a new card comes out. And of course, when profits are really good, we get to come together and figure out as a community how to get the best performance out of this card. So anyway, thank you. But back to overclocks. So here, my power limit, I've stayed pretty much the same, 60, 61% power limit. What that's given me is it's given me about 121, 122 watts for this card. Uh, the software reports that, and I verify that with my power meter there as well. So I'm confident that that's a good place for me to be in. Based on some comments from the community, as long as you're finding yourself in the 117 to about 125 place as far as watts being used, you can see right there I'm at 121, as long as you're finding yourself somewhere in that range, you're probably in a good spot, just depending on what card you have. You know, if this is a Gigabyte Eagle, maybe you have an EVGA, uh, maybe you have an ASUS. Uh, depending on what card you have, it may just work a little bit different. But the other thing I wanna mention is, I'm at a 61% power limit to get that 121 watts that you see there. You may have a different power limit. You may be in the 50s to reach that. It just depends on your manufacturer of your card, even the tier of your card that you have. Maybe you have a lower end card. I mean, I have the, the 399 version, you know, for a gigabyte here. Maybe you have the more expensive EVGA for the win and your power limits may be different. Uh, let's talk about core clocks. So you can see here, I've maintained that same negative 502. I found that's working really great for me. If I start to adjust that up a little bit, what happens is I start losing some mega hash. So I know that for me, at least on this particular card, staying with the core clock completely limited all the way down gives me the best performance on Ethereum. In the community, what I've seen is some people have better performance at negative 200. Others have shared that they have better performance at plus 50. So as I think, mess around in that range, mess around with the negative 502 bump it up a little bit at a time, see what your mega hash reports. Do you gain mega hash, lose mega hash? See where you land at for your specific card from the manufacturer that you have. All right, so on to memory clock. This is the most interesting one um, when it comes to Ethereum because Ethereum is a very memory hard algorithm. It cares about memory, it utilizes memory in its algorithm. So this is the one that really matters the most as far as mining goes. So you can see me personally, after weeks of testing on this, I've landed at 1,150 memory. Now, if you see my last video, what happened is I actually pushed this all the way. So it'll go to plus 1,500. And it seemed fine. At first, the computer was responsive, the miner was going, it had incredible performance, great efficiency. 
I had no crashes, no shutdowns, no weird artifacts on the screen. The miner kept going, so I felt really good. But what you notice at the very end of that video is the miner reported an incorrect, incorrect share, which is no good. That means that for the work the GPU is putting in, the pool is not paying you. So it's electricity wasted, it's work wasted. That work is not being validated and paid. So it's, you can't have it. You can't have uh, invalid shares, incorrect shares, anything uh, in that nature when you're mining. And typically what that means is that your overclocks are too high, whether it's an NVIDIA or AMD card, if you're getting invalid incorrect shares, your overclocks are too high. So what I had to do is I started messing around, I started lowering it to a place where I didn't get invalid or incorrect shares. And that's where I've landed at. I've landed at a place where I'm at 1150, okay? Let me talk a little bit about my experience here and some help I've had from the community. So I got a little stuck and I started feeling like I was chasing a ghost in the machine with this. Um, and I'll share what was happening. So what was happening is I would settle at 1150, for example, and then feeling really good, I'm mining for a while, and then what happens is I bump it up to 1200, and it's going, and it's going really great. My hash rate is improving, my efficiency is still really good, and I'm not getting any incorrect shares. So I bump it up a little more, maybe 1250, maybe 1300, and multiple days in a row, I'm feeling good. And the miner is good, and it's not reporting any incorrect or invalid shares. And then all of a sudden, I start getting them. And I'm like, okay, well, back to square one. But that's weird, because for multiple days, it was fine. And I want to share what somebody commented on my YouTube video that made me feel, first of all, not like a crazy person, and also gave me some help and uncovering um, maybe what it is. So what they shared was if they start, I think they mentioned Phoenix Miner specifically, if they start it at a lower core clock, like this 1150 here, and let the miner run for a little bit, and then while the miner is running, if they decide to up their core clock a little bit at a time, maybe I would hit 1200, it will stay stable and you won't get invalid or incorrect shares and you'll get that inc increased performance, but they do it while the miner is running. Yet, if, and they report this, and I've had this experience, if the miner is stopped and you up that memory clock and then start the miner, very quickly you will get invalid or incorrect share submitted. So I wanna be honest, I don't know what, any of what this means. I've had this experience I felt like I was crazy. I felt like I was chasing you know, a ghost in the machine here. Um, I don't know what that means though. I don't know if that is means nothing, for, first of all. I don't know if that means miners can get optimized or can get a little more performance out of it. I don't know if that's drivers. Um, I don't know if that is temperatures that the card is running at. I don't know, but I feel validated because that was my experience too. And it took me quite a while to lock down some memory overclocks because of it. But anyway, that's where I've settled. Um, again, depends on your individual card. Maybe it comes with some factory overclocks already. So I've seen some people report as low as plus 700. And I've seen some people reports uh, being stable at plus 1300 on the memory. It just depends on, I think, your individual card, the conditions you're running it in, the cooling it has, um, and maybe some of the factory overclocks that it already comes with. So please take all those things in consideration when looking at my numbers here or looking at other numbers reported in the community. Really, your end goal is to hit uh, a good performance uh, number with really good efficiency. And I'll, I'll share, you know, you can see right now um, I'm hitting 61.1 mega hash at 121 watts. Uh, this is using T-Rex miner, which I've just started. You can see I'm running it for about 34 minutes. I actually just started testing this miner. I'll say with Phoenix miner, going over multiple weeks, 121 watts at 60.8 mega hash is where I've been at. With these specific overclocks, running on this specific test bench, I've monitored that wattage in the software, I monitored it at the wall here, I know it's accurate. The pool also reports that same mega hash, so that's where I've been running at. So me specifically, 121 uh, watts at 60.8 mega hash is where I've landed, stable. 
Let's talk about the miners. So that was with Phoenix Miner, which works great. And I just started testing here T-Rex Miner 35 minutes ago to see if I get some more hash out of it, out of this card, maybe some more performance. Uh, and you can see, actually, yeah, I'm getting, you know, average over here is, is above 61. So I'm going to let this miner run, actually, for maybe a couple more days and see where it averages out to. But so far, it's looking good. One thing you do have to take into consideration, though, is T-Rex Miner charges a 1% dev fee on your mining, whereas Phoenix Miner, it charges a 0.65% dev fee on your mining. So maybe that kind of cancels things out. I'm not going to do the math on that on the fly right now, but I think you're safe using either T-Rex or Phoenix. Um, I think they're really going to probably balance out to just about the same. But right now, I am seeing a higher number in T-Rex Miner. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about is going to be, is this GPU thermal throttling? I got asked that question in the comments section. Now, you guys may know that the RTX 3080s are, are running into this problem. I think it's Red Panda Mining, and I'll link to it in the description below, who has a video on his RTX 3080 that was thermal throttling. And what that means is that the temperatures of the memory are running high, and so the GPU wants to protect itself. And what that's gonna mean in practice, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see your mega hash start off at a really good place. And then as the GPU warms up and the memory warms up, it's gonna protect itself. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna throttle. And what you'll see is your mega hash will drop. So maybe I'm at 61, then it'll be at 59, 58, 57, 56, until it gets to a point where it can cool and it'll perform and stay at that point. So let me show you guys this. The way to see if your GPU is thermal throttling is we're gonna use uh, this piece of software here called Hardware Info 64. So let me go ahead and open that. And it brings us to this page here where I can see it's picked up my video card, the RTX 3060 Ti. And then you're gonna click on sensors. And there's a lot of information in this window, but we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. We're going to look for this section called thermal. And if this was throttling, you would see a yes right here. You can see my power is throttled because I've power limited the card, so it says yes. You can see it's not thermal throttled right now, so it's not hitting a temperature where the card is trying to protect itself. So I'm confident to say that this manufacturer of this card, Gigabyte specifically, and this is the 399 card, so imagine even the, the better cards are, are have better cooling, but this specific card, running it mining Ethereum, it's just, it's not thermal, thermal throttling. You don't have to worry about this. You know, I'm running it in an open air frame here um, in my basement, which is pretty cool right now. Um, but the ambient temperature is probably around 68, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, if that's helpful for you. Okay, guys, I think that's pretty much it. I wanted to give you an update on where I've landed with this RTX 3060 Ti. And again, thank you to the community for coming together, helping out, sharing some numbers. You know, my goal here is to share my uh, own experience of this card and where I've landed back to all of you and then share some of the commentary that's been happening and I hope it's helpful whether you got one RTX 3060 Ti or you've been lucky enough to fill up a rig or multiple rigs of them I hope this information is helpful for you to get you started get you hitting some good numbers um, based on all of our experiences in the community okay guys that's the end of the video. I'll see you guys soon. In the meantime, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.